Good. Good. Intro. Good. It's intro time. Shush. Everyone, shut up. Let's jump into our next story. We are going to be talking about Dragon Age Veilguard. And holy smokes. The shit storm surrounding it. Okay, complete disclosure. I have not played any of the Dragon Age Veilguard or Dragon Age games, but my understanding so you have played all of them or most of them? I've played all of them. Okay, so you I'm, you're going to have to carry this one a bit, but um I definitely have a lot of questions about this. Um let's talk let's start with our first article just to start the conversation. So, Dragon Age of Veilguard player count dwarfed by Monster Hunter Wilds beta. Which doesn't surprise me. Monster Hunter is a huge IP. It's a huge IP. I mean, the Xbox release of the, uh, what was the mon- what was the Monster Hunter game that came out on World. Xbox? World. I, I mean, that was my first interaction with the Monster Hunter universe. I knew it existed, but I didn't care. I played Monster Hunter World, and it just was like, kill this monster, grind for material, yeah, upgrade. Yeah, that's all the game is. It, it wasn't a fun game loop for me, but I mean, we, like... Snipeaholic, friend of our friend of ours who comes on the channel, Tyler, uh, loves Monster Hunter. I think that's his favorite franchise, besides like Avatar: The Last Airbender. <laughs> um, so I mean, he's he's talking about this game, uh, talking about the beta. He's really excited for it. Um, I'll, I'll, I'm going to end up playing it. I know I will. Monster Monster Hunter is so much better than Ve- than Dragon Age. Is that is that the contention here? Is that it's just no. a big, it's a bigger franchise? Or it's, it's a bigger franchise. I like Dragon Age franchise more than I like the Monster Hunter franchise. Well, a beta release of a game is not typically a f- is not typically a blockbuster sensation. It's not typically a huge moment. Like a beta release is like like Call of Duty Black Ops Six had the beta, and you had a lot of YouTubers play testing it. Um, but it, I mean, it was just kind of a still only like a. Was week. it an open beta? I think, yeah, it was an open beta. They were running the multiplayer. I mean, X Defiant had an open beta. I mean, but I, I wouldn't have expected a beta to beat any major release game that's, espe- like, especially no, as popular I mean, as Dragon not, Age. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't surprise me that uh, Monster Hunter would do gangbuster numbers, but also Dragon Age is not doing great when it comes to numbers. Really? Uh, peak player count is, like, in the 70,000s. Whoa. Yeah, for a AAA game. <clears throat> it's tied right now with uh what was that game? Never mind. I can't I can't remember. Right, right. But it was tied with a game that Concord. Uh, no, I'm, yeah. kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But um so you and I have talked about this off podcast. I mean, your sentiment around the game is generally positive. Yeah, I can give what my positive bits about it before we go get, get into like the culture war and the shit things about it. Absolutely, I I really want to know like your honest, true takes on this game as someone who's played all the Dragon Age games and just kind of how maybe even maybe even give me a sense of where this exists rank ordered in the Dragon Age games because I don't know how many there are in total, but I don't know where this stands. This is, four. This is fourth uh, the fourth game or fourth place? Fourth game. <laughs> Uh, go ahead though. Yeah, tell me about. It. Talk to me about it. What's going well, on? Well, so full disclosure, I'm not super far into the game. I haven't recruited all the companions yet. The last one to get, and I sh- probably should have did this one last night instead of the other one, is the the trans person in question. Okay. So the trans person is one of your how many companion options? Seven. Are there? And you can have all of those companions at a time, or is it like? Well, you a- only take two of them out, out in the field. With okay, you. that's what I was wondering. So it's like it, it's one of seven. They're just hanging around the base, otherwise. Okay, so it Baldur's Gate in that context, right? Yeah, like you have shit. more companions than you need in your party. Mm. Okay. Uh, but otherwise, all the companions so far, I don't mind any of them. Uh, one's a little annoying because she's like constantly like. She's ADHD personified, I would say. <laughs> so the voice actor got paid overtime? Uh, yeah, and it's the voice actor. I think that all she also did um, that one store clerk in Fallout 3. In, uh, oh, okay. Time. Yep. Super annoying in that one, too. So I think it's just her. That's what. <laughs> just the voice actor. That's what she is hired for. Just that... be this annoying, high energy <laughs> person. But other than that, all the companions, I think, are fine. Well, only bad voice acting was like early in the game. You run into these elves, and this one chick is just like, "Wow, you didn't get any direction at all." No, it's just all over the place. I, but is uh is acquiring a account, uh, companion in the game elective, or in order to complete the game, you must unlock all? Uh, the part of the story mission so far. Okay, so it was dest. You're destined or and or required to achieve acquiring this companion. Right, like the last two companions, you are. Getting experts in certain fields, and mm-hmm. so it's part of the main story, also. So you have to get them. 
Okay. So the, the, how much you interact with them so far, I'm seeing that you don't have to talk to them all the time. It's basically like they get like a bubble over the head on the map. It's like, hey, you want to talk to this person? Mm-hmm. So I'm pretty sure you can avoid a lot of this shit. Um, but otherwise, uh, when it comes to like uh, creating your character or role playing, mm-hmm. character creation and art design, I'm okay with. A lot of people are bitching about how it looks more like Fortnite-y. Well, and, and uh, it... It strives. It stems away from because Dragon Age doesn't have a static art style, right? Like no, other games have. Time. Yeah, it changes every time. So this one goes away from that. Do you think the art style choice was a like a creative choice to improve the game, or do you think it was trying to cater to an audience who prefers that art style? I think it was trying to go for a more younger crowd. crowd. Try to reinvigorate the franchise with the younger people. Yeah, because Dragon Age is a dark fantasy series, and it's the art style kind of more like live livens it up the arts i when i was watching uh gameplay of it the art i would uh i would sim uh, make it make the case that it's similar in art style to like uh Her- uh hogwarts legacy yeah it's around that area at but- least the at least the like the setting stuff i don't know about the character design being identical i don't think the character design is too identical but the setting design is almost the same character design um looks all right it is very smooth and clean which we like I mean, I would say, like, uh, you look like almost like a doll sometimes. Oh, the, okay. The that's what you meant. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you meant like it's a, too smooth and like. I thought you meant like in how it plays. No. Okay. It does play well. But uh, yeah, in the gameplay, I was going to say something else about the. Oh. Does this game give you more to do than other uh, Dragon Age games? Like, is there a. a is there a fractional difference in the amount of content you get for your dollar or is it about the same as a normal as or is it a lot more or is it because with modern games it seems to be the case well, it's they... less it's less than inquisition because inquisition basically wanted to be a single player mmo oh okay and so there's a fuck load of quests in these massive regions mm-hmm. and people got t- turned off like on that there was a they call it the hinterlands problem it's the first area that you're in on uh Dragon Age Inc- Inquisition, mm-hmm. and you can spend ten hours straight in that in that area. first area. Yeah, that's and the same issue. The, I, the yeah. developers had to come out and say, "Leave the hinterlands. Don't go wandering around. Continue the story, then come back to it." Okay. So people are getting burned out hard on it. Well, uh, okay. So that problem exists in other games. Mm-hmm. Baldur's Gate three being the most relevant and current example, because in Baldur's Gate three, if we've talked about this in the past, if you want to do care, if you want to create a new character, you have to replay Act one, and it's the same content. It, it's not like I mean, you could play it, play through it differently, but you're still interacting with the exact same goblins, the exact same tieflings, the exact same drow. So a lot of the same dialogue. Exactly. So like. You it, you could only replay. I can only replay the first act so many times before I'm just like, listen. I just accept that I am not gonna get to Act Three. And actually, we we looked at a statistic last night on this. Um, as of August of this year, so only a couple months ago, only 22 percent of all players who played Baldur's Gate Three had completed the game, had completed the, the story. That means. Act three has not been touched by a majority of the audience. Seventy-eight percent of players finished by all finished by less than twenty, less than a quarter of them. Yeah. So. Well, well, playing this game, I was also kind of like, I think I was around the ten-hour yeah. mark, and uh, I was I just compared it to Inquisition. I was like, at hour eight in Inquisition, you already have, I think you have almost all your companions by then, and you move to your main base. Mm-hmm. So like a lot happens. And I was like, if I'm about at that 8, 10 hour mark here, that means I got like another 30, 40 hours of the game left. And if I'm doing everything, probably even more. So I'm was still very... There's uh, still a lot to do. Yeah. I think I'm only like 13, 14 hours in with the, my main character because I swapped. But yeah, the combat is really fluid. It's right. very action-based. It's not tactical like at all. You pause the game for like two seconds to issue commands to your... Uh, to your companions that can't die, right. by the way. They don't have health bars <laughs> or anything. They're in, immortal. Uh, and it it dumbs it down for you, too, where it's basically like, hey, this uh, attack combos with this attack. So it's like you don't have to think about anything at all, which kind of sucks. But if you just want to get with the flow, mm-hmm. I guess it works. I'm not much of a strategy gaming guy anyway. No, I mean, we leave that to Slim. I mean, have you ever seen that guy talk about like uh, like Age of Empires? 
like age of empires has all these percentage based bonuses that stack and stuff mm. and he like and also oh, diablo 4 is actually a better example of this because he did this and that he knows how to like class build or character build or optimize his strategies around these stacked percentages that he can keep uh building up and like getting multiplicative improvements right so it's it's absolutely frustrating and that's where you are left in the dust <laughs> he's so much better at it than i am i mean like even call of duty even black ops 6 has like perks that feed into other perks and mm. we talked about like xp bonuses and stuff during the intro but i mean it, slim's just it's significantly better than me at it yeah um and then combat in this game i mean it's changed with every dragon age so far i to, just to be like i think i think origins and inquisition are the closest ones together just to talk about the strategy game thing like i like strategy games that are simple i don't want to think about what troops mesh better or worse against each other so much as i want to be like posi like i like strategy simplified to positional advantage mm -hmm. so like you get your archers on the higher hill you get your cavalry behind your opponent you right get, right like i like strategic in that context so like Total War, I've I've had some success in Total War. I'm not good at it. Um, I've played I've played quite a bit, but I'm not that great at it. Um, but like Command and Conquer, I'm I'm awesome at Command and Conquer. Love those games. That's yeah, that's more like smaller military units, right? Exactly. You're not dealing with hundreds of yep. Yeah. And then, but uh, but Bannerlord, it's it's in Bannerlord. It's like, hey, your archers benefit from being higher. Your character applies mm -hmm. strategic bonuses to these characters and boosts morale. You can command your command and even lead your cavalry. All that stuff is things I really like about the strategy universe. I not, not to derail Veil, the Veilguard conversation so harshly. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, it's it's way more action focused. Plays more like God of War twenty eighteen and stuff than any of the other Dragon Ages. <coughs> and people are gonna, probably going to be pissy about that too. Really? Yeah. Everyone everyone says uh, Origins is the goat when it comes to the, the first one. Right. And it's more strategic. You basically like click an enemy. Your guy auto attacks until you until you use win. actions and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So there's more strategy to it, more control over your companions. So people are probably gonna say that one's the best. But level design wise, this is almost more like uh, Dragon Age Origins. Okay. Because so I heard people complaining that uh, it wasn't gonna be open world and it's gonna be more linear. And I think people assume that it'd just be like linear as fuck. There's no exploration whatsoever. But there's actually a lot. In okay. This game. Well, that's, I mean, that's a good thing, right? There's a lot of offbeat paths and whatnot, yeah. So it sounds like this this game really does step out of the mold considerably from other Dragon Age games. Yeah, it's it's a big departure, and I think they're trying to take this series into a new direction. What's the strongest similarities between the games? I mean, obviously, they are attached together by a, a, a lore, mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, like, mechanically, uh, like, is mechanically, there... Mechanically... Is there anything about it that's feel what about any what about this game feels familiar? It feels more like Mass Effect Andromeda. <laughs> so it doesn't so you don't get the I mean you're not getting a sense like of familiarity. How it, how it plays, yeah. But it doesn't, yeah. It's way too action based to be compared to the other Dragon Ages. Well, that's a huge I mean there I would were, there were a lot more <clears> static. <throat> Your character just kind of stood in place and swung. What does that mean for you since you're a since you're someone who's played all the Dragon Age games and obviously likes them to a pretty significant degree? I this mean, one's gonna be my favorite combat system. Dragon what? Age Veil. Vale. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm more of the action based guy anyway. It, the combat is fun, but the enemies can be very spongy. They can tank? Yeah, like I was I was doing something way above my uh, pay grade in early game. Like I was like level eight and then I stumbled across this level 25 mm -hmm. boss that unlocks shit later. And I was like, yeah, fuck it. Maybe I'll go down real quick and then I can just reload and do something else. Right. And I could actually sit there for probably an hour <laughs> just fighting this boss and just dodging everything. Cause the combat's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. It's just, yeah, they get very spongy and about like 10 minutes into the fight. I just stood there. I'm like, fuck this. <laughs> So, uh, so a lot of review a couple of reviewers actually turned down the difficulty not because it was hard just because you want to get through combat encounters quicker right there's quicker. a lot more to appreciate it i mean like the, i play campaigns on easy or normal mm -hmm. depending on the game uh sometimes i want to play normal sometimes i just want to get through the campaign like i'm here for the story you don't have to hard sell me on like the the mission difficulty i mean back in like modern warfare back in like OG Modern Warfare, Call of Duty 4, right? Um, in the original series. People were playing 
the modern warfare campaign on veteran difficulty i was like dude that's not fun that's like you can't play through the first mission it's, like you get like insta you get one tapped by yeah. ais no in those games it's not fun you play the game on like rookie or normal or whatever <laughs> and then you go to the veteran just because you got bored with it and you want to be like, you want to be a little you harder. want achievements and you already know every level like the back of your hand yep because otherwise holy shit i love sniper missions in the og call of duty modern warfare franchise dude because they MW. just fed, like, they fed you infinite bots, and you just got to sit there and just, oh, it was just turn your brain off and pick off enemies with a sniper. You're completely safe. Just have fun. Yeah, I remember doing veteran <laughs> difficulty on MW2, uh, the Flavilla. Yeah. Oh, Detroit. no. That was the worst experience of my entire life. That, I would expect. I've seen a man die. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a man die. <laughs> that was horrible. But yeah, no, level design combat, all good. Mm. I'm perfectly fine with it. So um, should we start, should we move into talk about the culture war? Well, actually, did you answer on where you thought this game ranked among the others as far as like... Uh, I can't really place it yet because I'm probably like a third of the way through it. Do you expect, so you and I, so we've been talking about it a little bit. Do you expect the culture war aspects of this game to impact your final verdict? And, and we're not going to... Probably gonna... not because I'm, mi I'm, <clears throat> I'm like skipping where they're at. I mean, we can go into the culture war part right now. I think we should. It's um, like the first, the first part is like a character creation. They got the pronouns. They got the gender. I didn't really go through the gender to see if you can pick anything else. But, and then they got the top surgery scars way at the bottom of the list of scars. And that was like the first big problem everyone had with it. Right. Because and, and you can't make the Canari look like fucking Canari. They look like blue dudes with horns. <laughs> Yeah, I uh so we're what story should we start with? Let's go look at Grum's reporting. So Grum's on So Grum's on Twitter. Sorry, I got to get ahead here. So we got uh I don't know if you guys could see the spike here, but you have this pretty steep spike in Monster Hunter uh wild beta tests. So um <laughs> so the source Steam Dragon Age Veilguard versus Monster Hunter Wild's beta. So this would be uh pr so this would be player players right now. Um as of October 31st, so that would be Thursday, uh, you had 400 and um, 460,000 uh, players on uh, the new Monster Hunter game versus the 50, a little less than 50,000 on Dragon Age Veilguard. The 24-hour peak, obviously, the like all of these numbers are this one that shot. That is really good for a fucking beta. <clears throat> it's amazing for a beta, and I think we kind of we got the benefit of having Tyler come on the podcast and telling us how ex how excited he was and how popular this game was going to be so i think we had a sneak pe sneak preview into that Doesn't success this game a little bit. come out in fucking february <clears throat> it's still a ways away yeah mm. and a beta for a game like this i would expect to carry months like i would expect it to be months before another or before they close or not not before they close it but before the official releases because mm. <clears throat> you also need to make yeah, room they need to work on it <clears throat> and stuff yet see what uh, we'll see what players have found wrong with it yeah and you need to make i mean there's also that also leaves room for a potential alpha alpha testing too oh no not sorry not alpha testing but um what is the what's post beta for uh a test i mean well, when they go gold that means the game's completed what okay fuck? i don't remember i thought there was an in-between i might be i might be wrong but basically dragon age Veilguard released on uh so they both released at the same time i didn't know that or the beta released on October 31st, the Dragon Damn. Age Veilguard released on the 30 on Thursday as well. So they both released at the same time and people seem to have been much more excited for I think a, we can attribute some quantity of these these numbers to uh the culture war related stuff with this Yeah, there's stuff. a bunch of bad press around Veilguard. And we've been I mean we've talked about it on the channel too. It's not yeah. like we're claiming ignorance. Like no, we talked about the Top Scar stuff. We talked about the fact that there was going to be a new art style. They were changing things up and going a different direction. The only question stuff. I had is how gay is the whole <clears throat> game going to be? Well, and it, it became pretty gay. Um, so far for me, though, it hasn't. There's two inst instances. One was the character creator, which mm -hmm. I like that they brought back origins in this where your character has like a defined backstory that you can choose from. Right. And then another one is uh, you're like uh, setting up your room or whatever in your new base and uh you're going through your shit and you lay down this thing this mirror that Varric gives you and then it's like you got a couple dialogue options on the right side or you can reflect on like scars like scars that you've gotten mm -hmm. or mental scars blah blah, blah. or you can reflect on gender <laughs> i i and then think... it goes into like these three options like pick how gay you are <laughs> kind of thing so 
I want to watch and react because I have not seen this yet. I knew it existed, but there was a scene. So there was a scene in the game where it's talking about pronouns, uh, and you probably understand this better than I do. So maybe you could summarize it better. But one thing I wanted to throw out there was that in the game, in the uh, Dutch version, when they're releasing this in German, um, you had uh, it when they released it in German. This scene was actually insert. This cutscene was put in the German version in English. That was one of the controversies around the. Oh, so the Germans were like, "Fuck that! We're not voicing that." Well, the the Germans, the no, Germans you think just they would because they're pretty left. Well, it just it um the pl it's it's affect it affected the players. We got planks in the chat. Thanks for joining us, buddy. Good to see you. Really excited for tonight. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, shout out any questions you got. We got Cody in here. He's an expert on Dragon Age. He's he's expert. like a genius. He's a genius on Dragon Age, and I am the smartest on everything else. Um, but yeah, so the the. I'm sorry. Oh, I wasn't even gonna fight you on that. The scene. Let it, slide. let it go. Let it go. Let me have this. I'm so low. The uh, the scene itself in the German version was in English. I don't know what the what to attribute that to. I don't know if it was the voice actors refusing to do it. I kind of doubt it, considering I don't. I don't. There could have been a number of things. It could have been a number, and I. It seemed to me to be the most likely that it was probably just an issue, like a glitch. Could be. Like it's it's still the first week of the game being out. Like it's. Not like it's impossible that a cutscene was the wrong cutscene. For it, you know, just being released, it's pretty fucking polished. I haven't had any, like, bugs <clears> or <throat> crashes or anything, really. So we are going to uh, live react. Um, we're going to live react to this. Uh, to this. I have not seen it. Cody, you've seen it, but you haven't played it yet. Like, you have not. I haven't gotten to this part yet. Okay, so let's go. Let's turn it on. Let's see what's what the fuss is about. Pounding that snake's nose. She's still holding the ruby in her other hand. Maker's panties. I was so proud. What oh, the fuck? Um. Ah, shit. They. They're still holding it. Sorry. What are you doing? Talking about the horn Pulling chick the there. She's, oh. the, she's oh. the queer. Okay. The bar. Is she just doing push ups? Pause there real quick. Fortune. Okay, yeah, I have so many questions. Okay. What was the controversy? She mispronounced someone or. She said she. She said and she. She's like, ah, oh, fuck, it's they. And now she's punishing, her, punishing herself by doing push ups. Push ups. And then in the next <laughs> minute, four, or minute and like 30 seconds is just going to be like, how apologies aren't good enough and blah, 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 blah. I mean, well, you can continue to play it. I will. Oh, I by the way, this is Isabella. She's from Dragon Age 2. And uh, she wouldn't give a fuck about offending anyone right okay that makes a lot of sense okay that that clarifies quite a bit from one of our old members barv good guy but like most of us his plans went sideways a lot bad blood among your crews not good for morale but there's not always time for big drawn out apologies so wait so it's it i mean that's just saying that's just saying what's true there's not time for apologies at all yeah. So it just it could, it keeps going. Just... It keeps going. When one of us screws up and we know we've screwed up, we do a quick ten to put it right. Pulling above. You got. Oh, there we go. You got to fix your mistakes, bro. Only five push-ups. <laughs> Jesus, you're like a super warrior oh, fighting. I'm glad the laws of fortune have Tarsh's back. Yeah. Oh, Tarsh isn't the first non-binary member of the Lords. Really? <laughs> it God. was a little before your time, but Horlicks was one of ours. Oh. Bastard looked better than I did in a dress or pants, and out of them. I highly too. doubt that. <laughs> yeah, that's not true, liar. Fake news. Any reason you can't just apologize? Sometimes people say, "Oops, sorry," and hope that fixes it, but they just want to get the whole thing over with. Trust me, I know. <laughs> but pulling a bath, you sweat a little, makes Dude. you think about it a little more, shows the other person you mean it. What if they mean it when they say they're sorry, though? And that's the other reason. Some people mess up and get all dramatic. They make it about them. Like you just uh, did, you know, like you just did a bunch of push-ups. It's like a two-minute fucking lecture about apologizing to miss uh, gendering someone. <laughs> Planks, your so Planks is in the chat. He says my arms would be massive if I would if I was in this universe, <laughs> dude. Your arms are you're a giant. Don't be jacked. You are a colossal human being. You yeah. You actually yeah. We, you, people would say you're on steroids. Looking like uh, Zac Efron. Yeah, there's this, and then there's also another scene that I just fucking saw before this podcast. <clears throat> I want to finish this out, though. Okay. There's only 10 seconds left, or I don't know 20 how seconds left. Yeah. There's 20 seconds left. I mean it right. I'd never do that on purpose. They feel so bad about it that it's on everyone else to smooth it over and make them feel better. Holy crap. Oh. Projection. Oh, okay. Yes, some people might do that. Pulling a barve puts it on the person who screwed up. 
They made the mess. They fix it. Done. Holy shit. Gay. There's so much about that. I, I have. Okay. First off, the lack of self-awareness with the fact that she just did what she was complaining about people doing. It's like, right. you just make the whole thing about you. You literally stood up, walked across the room and did five push-ups in, str- in front of everyone. And, and the other person didn't, <laughs> the other person didn't even seem to react at all. Like, it, like, I hate this shit. Like, this is like, okay. This doesn't move the needle. You've already seen this, and we've already talked about it. This doesn't move the needle for you at all. Like, in, in the, like, here's Yeah, what- it might. I don't know. I haven't gotten to it yet, but uh, it, is, it is pretty fucking annoying. Uh, another thing to go on with, like, this uh, PC shit is that uh, the game, like, the dialogue throughout this game is pretty vanilla. There's no, like, you can't be an asshole. You can't offend anyone ever. Uh, I heard it from, I think, uh, Skill Up, the reviewer. He said, it's like having conversations with people with HR in the room with you. So it's very, like, you can't, oh, you can't offend anyone. That would be it. hard. You to... can't even piss off your companions by, like, leaving them <laughs> well, to do something. I think this leads into, like, my main question of this segment is, where should, play- where should we recommend players be when it comes to games that have messaging inserted into them? It used to be the case that if you had a strong female character in your video game, you just played the game and the culture war wasn't relevant because you were having fun, you weren't being preached to, you were just appreciating and enjoying a game. Right. That's not what this is. No. This was a That was preachy. This was a 2-minute TED talk on pronouns in video games that it, it I imagine this scene could be skipped or cut or like you could get through it yeah, quickly. Yeah, like when I if I if I encounter that scene I'm just going to be hit in circle really fucking fast and skipping through everything. Okay, so my question is where should player what amount of this stuff in a video game should people tolerate for the sake of enjoying their own game? I mean, it depends on the person, really. Like say I never played a Dragon Age game, I pr- I just want to pick this one up based on that pretty much based on that alone. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. But I've been playing this this series since 2009. I was going to review it either way. If it sucked or if it was the gayest game ever. You were going to talk about it. I was going to talk about it. Right. And we're, but, very, we're very inclusive. We want to review gay games like this gay one. Games. Exclusively. And, oh, man, they go balls to the wall with purple in this game. I thought you were going to say that. balls deep. but <laughs> <laughs> No, not um, yet. <laughs> sorry. But, uh, so. But, like, uh, other Dragon Age games also had, like, you could... You could fuck other dudes or chicks in uh in Dragon Age. In Dragon Age. So so it's not a new thing. It's just this preachy new age uh California shit is what's really the issue here. But should we okay. No one really gives a shit about being gay or lesbian. It's like you throw it in your everyone's face and you make that your only personality trait. That's what everyone fucking hates. That's the frustrating thing about it. Absolutely. So okay, so you're a fan of Dragon Age. People who are a fan of Dragon Age will probably continue to enjoy this game, even though there's new things about it. And the and the culture war stuff, the, the woke, and just for clarification, like I, I've seen in comments, people are like, well, you don't even know what woke means. It's like, for me, how I understand woke to mean is it's the it's the crux of identitarianism. It's the practice. It's identity the pra- politics. Yeah, it's the praxis of identitarianism and in, in identity politics like if all you can engage with is race sexuality like if those are the things that drive your worldview mm-hmm. then i would uh, then i would ascribe to you the the title of or the qualifier of woke that's yeah. what i that's how i do it it's not like i use woke and i'm just like oh throw this in the title it's going to be super fun to watch the fight watch the fight no i actually mean that your your ideology is so poisonous that it can literally call it something char- and characterize it right. with this word yeah. And that's that's what I mean. Um, but, but I think the overall discourse around the game. Do you think it's overblown? I think it's overblown a bit. Well, this because is- like okay, I was uh, what the hell? I saw something. Uh, there was a couple like Steam reviews or whatever. It's like don't buy super gay woke blah blah blah. But you can see people's playtime mm-hmm. in the reviews and see and they- every the highest one was an hour and a half. Yeah. And then you left a negative review because what? In the first hour and a half, you're chasing down Solus, which is an elven god, to stop him from a ritual. And it's well, actually kind of cool. What even, okay, what gay in this game can you even experience in the first hour? Just the what, character what, creation? What gay in this game can you experience? Look, that's it, a hell of a sentence, bro. It's, 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 it's structure. That what noun? My, that might be my favorite. I use sentence. gay as a noun. 
What, <laughs> what gay in this game can you experience? Like, what, uh, what, just specifically the, just within the first hour. Just a character creator, really. That's the only thing you can reach in the first hour. I mean, you got would... this ripped bar owner chick, but you can beat the shit out of her. Yeah, well, I mean, it's very. I'm very strong, yeah. and she probably deserved it. <laughs> Sorry. But otherwise, no. It's not gay. Not gay. Nothing gay has come up until four hours in. You got that mirror thing. Yeah, yeah. A couple hours in. And then I'm 14 hours in and haven't experienced the gay. Well, I'm curious. So, like... I mean, you can hit on other companions, so that could be gay, but... Um, yeah, so Plank says it really well in the chat. So the reaction is overblown because we are on the backside of the pendulum swing and of reacting to woke games. I... Okay, I, I, I agree with the sentiment you guys are both saying. My issue is that this, at the end of the day, still costs people money, and there is the, the culture war is not over. No. Like these people are these people are still the dominant power in creating a, in the creation of video games, media, entertainment. And even though there's been course correction, you won't convince any of these people they've made a singular mistake. No, no. So they're yeah, they're always right. So I think that the backlash is pro I think the backlash is probably appropriate even to this smaller scale. And I mean I I want people to enjoy the video games they want. When someone comes up to me and they say, "I enjoyed Rings of Power." I was I my my perspective of them changes significantly <laughs> but i i'm glad people like, find oh that's cute you're stupid <laughs> yeah exactly i'm glad people find content to enjoy genuinely i genuinely want people to find content to enjoy right i think the audience the, the small audience has been like the very small audience who appreciates this modern the modern audience sorry i was trying to get yeah, to what the to modern go. the modern audience has gotten so much content and there's so few of them. Now I'm like, okay, let's get back to like making good stuff again. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that when it comes to games like this, I don't think the small stuff should be brushed off, especially especially in this game with that two minute like TED talk. Yeah, if well, it was and there's a scene earlier. I think I'm assuming it's earlier. Like she comes, I think she comes out to her mom as non-binary. It's like a sit down. You could I, there was a video with a laugh track behind it. <laughs> she like brings up some food, slams on the table, sits down, she's like. I'm not non-binary, and the laugh track kicks on and stuff, and it actually worked pretty well. Uh, I, I but, so, yeah, it just seems like that, and it's I'm the way the game's playing so far. I think you can just recruit her and just never talk to her or have her in your party. Well, and but it's but she's gonna be in like major like story scenes, I would suppose. All the same, I just really appreciate that. I really appreciate that there is still criticism being brought out. I think the closest I'm willing to come to the middle on this is that. There's too much of it for as little as this game has. You could probably have singular video. Like you have um, Yellow Flash as a content creator who I absolutely love. I, I watch him. I get a lot of inspiration from his content and mm -hmm. um, really enjoyed listening to his takes on things. But he's made three videos this like in the last couple of days about Dragon Age Veilguard, and there's been two, three issues. All of those could be one conversation, and then we could move on. And you could, and Dragon Age will get the proportionate issue. Will get the proportionate reaction to it. Um, you know, yeah. we. But another part would probably be like uh, how they uh, everyone's uh, everyone is so like diverse all the time. Right. It's like you can live in the far north or whatever, and you got like black communities and stuff, or in the south or in, like deserts and whatnot. And you got the like the whitest people. It's like you're no one's ever like from a certain area. You're right. just all. Yeah, like, I didn't even realize, I was playing the game, I didn't even fucking realize it a long ways in. I'm like, oh yeah, I don't think I've ever seen an Asian elf, a black elf. <laughs> right, because now they're all here. But. Well, depending on where you draw your source from, there wouldn't be any diversity in elves. I mean, it depends on where you draw your sources right. from, how far back into history you go to what writers who created it and whatnot. So, it, yeah. But yeah, no. <clears throat> I mean, do you, okay, I want to. I've been, I've been enjoying the game. So oh. you you think genuinely that the the criticism is just overblown, and you would do you wish that it would just not have happened? Like the the criticism no, against the game, like do you think it it has a place in in the in the in the dialogue? No, it definitely need to be said, and people need to know about it. Okay, but uh, the overreaction, uh, basically, I would say almost killed this game. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, if you don't have a tolerance for it at all, then it's fine. Yeah, so Planks, so we see Benjamin in the chat. Good to see you, buddy. Enjoy your drawing. Uh, Plank says, new Call of Duty is one where I think uh, they did diversity correctly, uh, where it was feasibly organic. 
I actually agree with that. Um, diversity in that game isn't really even a factor. Um, and I haven't played through the campaign yet, so I still have to see if there's an issue in it, but I haven't heard anything, so I'm not expecting there to be. Let's uh, finish out these news stories because we still have two more topics to get to and we're already over time. So Bioware allegedly scrambles to remove gameplay footage of Dragon Age Vil Vilgard Virtue Cringe. So on October 30th, before the release, they were trying to get that plunged, it sounds like, and get that ri get that rid of that. That scene that we just saw. Yeah, the yeah, scene we just saw. Yep. Um, so Mark Kearns, that's Grums, uh, definitely was the source we were just watching for where it goes from. Uh, EA and Bioware are yanking this clip off the internet as fast as po as it can be posted within minutes. They know it's terrible, just like the rest of the game. Watch it while you still can. Um, so I think his perspective on there is pretty obvious and candid. I think he is not a fan of the game, but I'd be curious to know how much he actually, uh, I'd be curious to know how much he's actually played of the game or if he's kind of where I am on this, where it's like, just covering the news around covering the news around it because i am i am just covering the news around it i have not played it i don't personally intend to but i appreciate that you know as much as you do about it yeah i mean i've been enjoying it but quick it's it's supposed to be an rpg there's very little choice and consequence in this game you're just kind of going through the motions right and i that's, that's frustrating. annoying well bioware wasn't they're bioware no, they're known for their choices and shit and yeah games. i was gonna say that it's like mass effect it's but this like, ain't the same bioware it was years ago in mass effect i think it's mass effect three your decisions actually impact the ending of the game like well, right throughout one two and three like, okay so it all, oh all, that's all right the they all carry over they all lead into the next game that is still such a huge and well designed they were doing that system. with this too with uh, the dragon keep where you can just pick and choose what happened in the game before and then this one you get three choices of what happened before well the uh Asmongold gets banned from Dragon Age subreddit. So actually, we um, off the podcast we reacted last night to uh, a clip of Asmongold going through a dialogue tree. That was with, the mirror thing. With but... with the mirror, um, and like Cody said, uh, it is avoidable. So or you could choose one, yeah, a different one, one. You don't have to pick it. And he was saying like there were three options, and each one led to trans. And he's like, I'm forced to be trans. And then on the bottom left, there was a back button. Yeah. So, so. it's. I, I I don't believe you picked, you picked an option that says uh, uh fucking think about gender. Well, what I, do you think it's gonna lead? Well, I highly doubt he's being disingenuous with this in the sense that like oh he's like first off Asmund Gold does not need to garnish clickbait. Like no, he doesn't no. need to. He's one of the biggest streamers that's that exists. Um, and his platform is huge. Uh, so I don't think it was done to be like, look, I got a 30 second clip of me being frustrated at the dialogue tree. Right. I genuinely believe when, when I was watching that, that he actually had the, he, I, I believe he believes, right? <laughs> it's like, I, I like reacting to someone's perspective, but I watched his, uh, his, uh, I watched that interaction. I've seen some of his other interactions with Veilguard, And I think it's just a general sentiment that, my half of the conversation is just so over this that the small things are, are not allowed to be got away with anymore. Like you have to kill this in its crib. Yeah. It, that's, that's where I think you got a baby Hitler, this shit. Yeah. Just choke it out. Yep. It's got a baby Thanos do the shake, 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 <laughs> <Great>. shake, shake, shake. <laughs> but as gold being banned from Reddit, he said kind of an interesting, uh, a uh, little interesting uh, arc here the last couple of weeks where being banned yeah, from he's Twitch. Yeah, fucking up and for down. And uh, did you see the, the he posted... Um, I thought he cleaned his house. He posted a picture of his cleaned house and it's kind of like a mildly less dirty room. <laughs> it's like, and he showed a receipt he had from the Bush administration from a restaurant he bought or bought food from. Uh, like, a, a, like a receipt from the restaurant. He, like the receipt was dated to back during the Bush administration. <laughs> so that's how far Holy back this shit. That's how deep that mountain was to be buried on. So uh, I think we had, do we have anything else with? No. Uh, so I think that covers it for Dragon Age Veilguard. Um, we, any final thoughts on it that you want to cover? Otherwise, I'm going to uh, keep playing it. We'll see how gay it gets, I guess. Fair enough. All right. We have another story to get into.